Hi, it's Aaliyah from the Song of the Winds. I hope you're doing really well. Today we'll be doing episode two of the Tarot and Crystal Correspondences series. In my first video, we covered the first eight cards, and in this video, we're going to cover the next five. So this is the Hermit, the Wheel of Fortune, Justice, Hanged Man, and Death. If you didn't catch the first video in the series, I'll include it in the cards now. I think it's, I think it's there. <laughs> um, and you can go back and watch that one first. Okay, let's jump right in. The first card is the Hermit, and traditionally speaking, it's about casting a light on the truth and coming from a distance or a higher place. And in modern times, it can often be about recovery from a trauma. It could be something you need to work through and space and distance is what is required. It's also about making space in your life and simplifying so that you can listen to your inner voice, take a step back, do some soul, some soul searching, you know, think about why do I do ABC, you know, what, why do I have that particular response? Why do I have that behavior? And consider carefully before committing yourself to new things in your life. It's often considered to be a card of spiritual awakening and seeking answers. You can see in each of these cards, as you know, different as they all are, they're all looking inwards. They're not, they're not looking at anyone else besides what's in front of them. They're very, very closely examining things. So the stone I've chosen is Lepedalite. And to get to the Hermit, you've had to go through some pretty big life lessons to actually reach that point. So after all of that, the balancing and the calming nature of Lepedalite, and it's calming to the emotional body as well, is, is a really welcome relief from all those, those lessons. And it helps us find harmony in ourselves and process bad situations from a place of calm. So you can safely dig to the root cause of what you're trying to reconcile within yourself. And it can help dispel negative thoughts like envy. It's, it's a take time out crystal and it blends well with the energy of the hermit. The wheel of fortune. A wheel is such a good symbol for this because life is often a lot like up, 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 down, 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 down. And our life experiences continue to test us until we master them. So that's why people often see recurring issues like relationship troubles, conflict, living in excess. It'll always be present within us and it will always present itself again and often in bigger and more challenging ways until we finally say enough's enough and we change our behaviors. There's a saying that nothing is certain in life except for death and taxes. And yet sometimes things appear to be fated or there's chance encounters that can change our entire lives and it makes you wonder if perhaps destiny does exist in some form. And if that's so, then bad luck can also be seen as fluid and leading you towards something else, another challenge or opportunity. Lapis Lazuli. It's a stone that was heavily utilized by ancient kings and queens and most notably in ancient Egypt. It helps to awaken royalty within us all. It's that powerful place within us that allows for discernment and knowing how to actually take control of your life. You can see the bigger picture and so much better from this place. It allows for perspective and seeing the... The, the we, not the me, if that makes sense. So that you can reflect and make decisions based on how you fit into the world and how you impact others, as well as what you as an individual need. It's a pretty selfless crystal in many ways. And it's also traditionally used for divine messages and inspiration. If you ask and listen when working with Lapis, who knows what perspective you might gain from a higher place. So the Justice card is all about rationality and emotional distance and deeply examining our own motivations and action. It's, it requires excellent communication skills, but especially listening. It's not a card of quick action. You need to deeply consider the situation at hand. And you can also look at it like Lady Karma sees all and the scales have to balance. So ultimate goal there is fairness and harmony. You can also look at it as being 100% solid in your own convictions so that no matter what gets thrown your way, you know that it's the best and most fair decision, that it will stand up to scrutiny. And in a lot of ways, this card encourages us to shed our ego so that we can act in true fairness and actually do and act in a way that is right and go beyond what serves us personally. An example of this could be, uh, say, voting uh, politically. If you're a high income earner, it would be best for you personally to vote in for a party promising tax cuts to the rich. But you, you know, you deeply, deeply know the most fair way to tax is on a sliding scale and that low income earners need as much help as possible to make the country fair and comfortable for everyone. So on that basis, you don't vote for, for you, for what's best for you. You actually see the overall fairness that is required in that situation. The crystal I've chosen for this card is Ametrine, which is citrine and amethyst all in the one crystal. 
It's like the me and the we are all in together. So you can see what's best for you, but you can also see what's best for other people. It's got a sense of decisiveness that's truly on task. It doesn't want to hear what was on TV last night. It's far too focused to be distracted by things like that. It helps you take clear and decisive steps with some higher guidance thrown in, thanks to the amethyst. And it's brilliant for those that struggle with indecision. The next card is the Hanged Man. And pictorially, there's so many clues to the meaning of this card within the images. Although the figure is upside down and suspended in what must be a pretty uncomfortable way, they all appear to be pretty chilled out. And the halo, that peacefulness, it suggests that there's a spiritual lesson to be found or a greater awakening in the current predicament, that you can actually find comfort in the uncomfortable and you can try something new and have a different approach. It's also a card that allows us to make peace with something in preparation for letting go because the death card is next. Inversions are pretty popular, fairly advanced yoga pose, and while it can feel amazing to have that different view and feel those new sensations, if you remain there for too long, we'll do damage to ourselves. So it's about having the epiphany, making that decision, having that, that spark of inspiration, that moment of knowing, and then simply moving on, knowing that in order to truly achieve that, you have to, to do it, to go next. And so for that, I've chosen kyanite, blue kyanite. It's like a little sanctuary of inner peace and it encourages you to stay balanced in all major things in your life, in the mental, emotional, physical and spiritual sense. And this liberation helps decision making feel a bit more graceful and natural, as you can see in this image here. And when you can see things a little bit differently, you'll find it more, you can more easily identify what your circumstances require. So what has to happen, what you have to do next. And just tying back to how, how peaceful this stone actually um, is, it's fantastic for sleep. It's really, really calming and soothing. It's a great crystal to have in your room, especially if you suffer from insomnia or you might find it difficult to get to sleep or you wake frequently. Um, I often have really, really productive sleep, you know, if that makes sense. <laughs> I'll stay asleep for hours and hours and hours on end rather than, you know, wake up hourly like I tend to do. So the reason I mention that is if you're calm and you're well rested, it's so much easier to make a decision and actually see what needs to be done and come at things from a different perspective. Finally, the last card for today is death. And we project a lot of fears onto this card, but in many ways, it's a welcome energy because we can't have the beauty of spring unless the leaves fall in the autumn. If we only ever saw autumn, that would be some sort of existential bummer because we don't know that some, we, we couldn't know that something really beautiful comes from that, that we have the flowers blooming and all of the, the green shoots and leaves. In knowing that things are cyclical, we know that better things come after this, that there's hope and a promise of renewal. And there's a time of birth, death and renewal in all of us, for all of us, for, for so many different things. It could be our, our habits, it could be the knee-jerk responses we have to things, our opinions, our goals unnecessary people in our lives such as those that negatively impact us mentally that that are not in any way benefiting our enjoyment and comfort in the world that are actively damaging us it's the end of a cycle this card might come up a lot for you if you've been avoiding the end of something and i know it did for me a lot last year and then once i let go of what was causing me grief and what was holding me back Behold, I started to pull the world card and then after that the fool began to appear. And that doesn't mean that I didn't cry my eyes out at the time, but something really good came from that death. It's about shedding the past, making space and allowing something new to come in. And this card's really about real physical death. If anything, it's a call to recognize your own pain and through time or professional assistance, you can hopefully find some sort of hope and peace in your life and move past that, move past that difficulty. Now, of course, there's varying degrees to the death card and we all deal with, with loss and with change differently. What one person might take in their stride could be the last straw for someone else. You don't have to be brave to get through the death card. You don't have to go it alone. In fact, support and comfort is often essential to come out on the other side of it. And the crystal I've chosen for this card is Epidote. And that is these, the lighting isn't great in here right now, I'm afraid. It's that time of day. Um, this is Epidote in Pre-Night. So you can see those darker kind of those darker kind of shards. It's a little bit reminiscent of tourmaline um, inside there. That's Epidote. It helps you release negativity and embrace positive patterns. But a word of warning with this particular crystal. 
it'll bring in what you already have in abundance. So it's kind of like clear quartz in its amplification properties, but in this sense, it actually draws to you what you already have a lot of. So if you're wanting to move on and change, it'll help you do that. But if you're resisting and you're finding reasons to stay stuck, it will do that for you too. And one of the best quotes that I've found about Epidote is, exaggeration leads to reform. So let's say, for example, you're like me and you get road rage. It feels like that response that you have is okay until you actually get it back in your face again and again. And you begin to see that it's scary, it's unbalanced, it's dangerous, and it's ultimately pointless. And it causes more risk than the response actually changes. So what this means with Epidote is that perhaps you need to see your own behavior dead on before you realize that your own response needs to change. You need to see it in an exaggerated sense before you realize what it's actually like to be on the receiving end of it and how unserving it ultimately is. Now, the caveat to this crystal choice is it's only suitable if you're ready to move on. When you recognize that negative and repetitive patterns that you have, you want to change them, but perhaps you need a little push. If you're struggling with something traumatic, drastically life-altering, or you're grieving, then I would suggest rose quartz because comfort, gentle, unconditional love, and enough peace that you so you can at least get some rest and ask for help is what you need right now. You probably don't need to have all of this amped up to 100 and just coming straight back at you. You probably are not going to be served by having a ton more grief and a ton more trauma. That's not going to help anyone. Whereas warmth and compassion and unconditional love is better in this space so that you can actually move on. And just in case you haven't gone back to watch the first video, I'll just let you know what um, tarot decks these are. This is the Everyday Witch, Slow Holler, Rider Waite Smith, and the Next World Tarot. And just to recap with our crystal and tarot correspondences for today, we've got Lepedalite, which corresponds to the Hermit card, Lapis Lazuli, which corresponds to the Wheel of Fortune, Amatrine, which corresponds to Justice, Blue Kyanite, which corresponds to the Hangman, and Epidote, this is in pre-night, but the Epidote relates to Death, and also Rose Quartz can come into that too. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Until next time, you have a lovely day, week, month, whatever it ends up being, and I'll speak to you again real soon. Bye.